the queen is dead and Mr. Girl is banned. I heard some time ago that the Conservative Party was choosing a new leader to replace Boris Johnson, uh, but I hadn't kept up with it. And so now I've discovered that not only do they have a new king, they also have a new prime minister. So congratulations, Liz Truss, for becoming the most hated person in Britain for the next six months at least. I hope you enjoy it. I don't really like the whole system of representative democracy because I think it gives people easy scapegoats for their own problems that they are creating. I think it's absurd that people complain about politicians instead of the people who are voting for the politicians. But I guess I can understand it a little better in a parliamentary system where you have a prime minister who isn't selected by the voters directly, they're selected by the party. So I guess there's another layer of abstraction there. I just don't like the fact that people don't feel like they have any power, because they definitely do. And feeling like you don't have any power is just a way to shirk responsibility when things go wrong. If politicians are corrupt, it's because people are corrupt. End of story. But, uh, new king, new prime minister, new day. Charles III. I did not expect that. Um, I'd seen all these articles for a while saying why Charles will probably not become Charles III. Um, so the fact that he kept his name is quite interesting to me, especially because of the history surrounding that name history that, um, has a lot to do with the topic of this book, a book which I haven't read. <laughs> this fellow right here is Duke William of Orange, or, uh, King William III of England, the founder of the current royal dynasty of uh, Great Britain. And the other two King Charleses were from the Stuart dynasty, who were the enemies of the current dynasty. So I guess there's a bit of history there. Also, one of them was beheaded by Parliament. So I guess for that reason, the name Charles was a bit contentious, but uh, I'm glad that he chose to stick with Charles because we don't need another George. And that's really my main takeaway from all this, is just the name. Um, you know, a lot of people... A lot of people are now discussing the whole should there even be a monarchy thing in the first place, and, um... Personally, I don't, uh... I don't really have much of a strong opinion about that. The idea of a monarchy does not actually go against any of my principles. I would gladly surrender all power in this country to one single person if... I had a guarantee that it would produce good results. I'm not a Republican, I'm not a populist, I don't like the people. And I don't think the people have their own best interests at heart. So the question of whether Britain should keep its monarchy to me is really a cost-benefit analysis. There's that, uh, that video that CGP Grey made a long, long time ago where he basically said that uh, the royal family is a net gain to the United Kingdom because of all the land they have, which is taxed and the revenue goes straight to the uh, government. But um, they only have that land because they're the royals. If Parliament wanted to, it could probably create a law that allows them to seize that land because it was royal land and they are now disbanding the monarchy. So the institution which owned the land, the family that owned the land, is no longer has any power. They would have to jump through some legal hoops around that, but yeah, they could totally seize their land if they wanted to, if it were a question of disbanding the monarchy. So I don't think the idea that the uh, the crown gives any kind of benefit to the country financially really holds any water. Uh, the tourism ground is complete nonsense. The monarchy does not drive tourism to Great Britain, let's be real. Great Britain drives tourism to Great Britain. I would be a fan of Great Britain whether there was a monarchy or not. But in other news, Mr. Girl has been banned from YouTube, which probably marks the third time one of my favorite YouTubers has been banned. The first time was Monkey Jones, who was banned for making great videos about Elliot Roger. 
The second was uh, Vegan Gains, who was banned for, like, no reason. I don't even remember. It's strange because he had stopped making the kind of videos that should have gotten him banned because of the whole demonetization thing in 2017. Um, and so I, I don't know why he got banned uh, randomly when he did. Uh, the third, of course, now is v is uh, Mr. Girl, uh, who I actually only discovered very recently. And Mr. Girl is such an interesting YouTuber. In fact, if I were to list the three most interesting YouTubers on the platform, they would without a doubt be The Amazing Atheist, Vegan Gains, and Mr. Girl. All three of these people are very controversial, not just in their ideas and the things they say, but also in the way that they say them and in their personalities and their life stories. These are challenging people. These are people who really upset the general public. Normal people don't like them, but I like them because I'm not normal. In fact, I prefer people who have something seriously wrong with them over people who are just normal. All of my favorite people are strange. And all three of these YouTubers have something very important and very interesting to say. And they have a message that a lot of people aren't ready for. Mr. Girl, I only discovered very recently and uh, he is mostly controversial for his takes on pedophilia cuz i'm a pedophile pedophile you got damn right i'm a literal pedophile and i think that he's pretty much totally right about all that stuff but we're not allowed to have an honest conversation about those topics because it it makes people afraid. But that's not why he got banned. He got banned uh, because he was attacking or criticizing rather Nick Fuentes. Jews are the problem. <laughs> Nick Fuentes is crazy alt-right audience flagged a bunch of his videos. And uh, he got, he eventually got banned for nudity, I guess, which I didn't even know he had nudity in his videos, but apparently he had a nudity in some of his stuff. But what I like about Mr. Girl is that he has no filter. Um, he has had a very strange life and he is not afraid to talk about it. He's not afraid to talk about his perverted inner feelings. He's not afraid to talk about what makes him horny he and vegan gains and the amazing atheist are boundary pushers they are groundbreakers they're people who challenge us to think beyond our normal parameters and normal people don't appreciate it because normal people are stupid and so they're very unpopular because because stupidity is popular and actually thinking about stuff is unpopular. Actually considering perspectives that you initially find distasteful is not something that people normally want to do, which is why I find these YouTubers so valuable and I want to see more people like them and I want to see these people stick around. I want challenging YouTube videos, but that's not really what YouTube is built for. The commercial aspect of YouTube and how it has to placate everybody is something that I very much dislike. I wish we could have free speech on YouTube. I wish we could have uh, an environment where it's okay to talk about ideas, but YouTube exists in order to make money. And so we can't have that. And the banning of Mr. Girl really demonstrates that. You know, one of the best, most challenging, interesting, inspiring YouTubers on the platform gets snuffed out 
Of course, he's probably going to be back at some point. Vegan Gaines came back. Monkey Jones came back. People come back from being banned, even though they're technically not supposed to. It's technically supposed to be a permanent thing. YouTube just doesn't, YouTube can't keep up with that. If if somebody wants to be on YouTube, they're going to be on YouTube. And so I imagine Mr. Girl, and he, by the way, he still has a second channel up. That's still a thing. And so he's not even really gone. And But I, I assume his main channel probably will come back at some time in the future. Who knows? I mean, he's been banned before. This has happened before. But yeah, it just kind of gets me thinking about my place on this uh, website because, you know, I want to be here to talk about ideas. I want to be here to discuss things uh, in, a, in an honest way, in an open way in a way that doesn't kowtow to people's sensitivities. And YouTube discourages that. YouTube doesn't want that. I wish that we as a culture were encouraged to think outside of the box and to appreciate things rather than hate them. And the reason I, uh, I'm more fond of criticizing the left than the right is because I think the, the left is more hypocritical about this. Because I think the left should be about uh, this sort of you know, free expression, free speech, um, open to new ideas sort of thinking, curiosity. But it really isn't. Um, you know, it has a lot of the same trappings and a lot of the same patterns uh, that cause the things that left-wingers hate about the right wing. And yet uh, the left seems very uncognizant of that. Harmful opinions and dangerous ideas are the things that I am drawn to the most because they're the things that polite society doesn't want you to see. And that means that people are afraid of them, which is not good. People shouldn't be just indulging their own fears. They should be facing their fears. And this isn't about uh, me thinking that I have some better version of the truth than other people. Uh, I don't think that I have the truth or I am right uh, about things. I just think I, I'm curious and I care about the truth in a way that other people don't. Other people would rather just live their entire lives in fear of something they don't like being true rather than actually considering it and accepting it. I don't think that alt-right people or scientific racists should be banned from YouTube. I don't think that Mr. Girl should be banned from YouTube. Banning these people only reinforces the idea that it's okay to be afraid of ideas. That an intellectual claim or postulation can be so threatening to people that they need to remove it from society. This is intellectual suicide.